This video is entitled World in a Spin, World in a Flux, Contradictions Galore. On one side, we are part of the Quad. On the other side, we are attending a, a we just attended a, a, a BRICS summit with the, the two rogues in the gallery, Putin and Xi. The other side, he's, our Prime Minister is headed towards the G7. On the way back, he's going to be stopping at Dubai. We're another contradiction of sorts where we've been, uh, where, uh, we've been bullied as far as our pants have been uh, pulled up and in, in kind of stuff that was happening to uh, our, for, our uh, minorities in India. But hey, we're still in play, right? We're back in Afghanistan, still in play, right? And what is important to note here is why I say this. She to host BRICS meet on June 23rd, which she did. Modi listening, she... Cold War mentality, block confrontation must be abandoned. That is again a straight finger at us and the Quad. But Quad is the only thing that's given us visibility, folks. And we are giving, actually, us being part of the prick is adding some sheen to it. Because between Brazil down and out, South Africa down and out, Brazil, uh, Russia in the, in the in the shit list, and as well as she, bigger shit list, right? Bricks after U uh, Ukraine writes Mohammed Saqib, it needs to reaffirm its original agenda of rebalancing global power equation. Now, this is, the, this is their old mentality, North versus South which is what has held us back all these years. He says, BRICS required a recalibration of its structure and agenda, creating financial mechanisms and technological institutions to turn BRIC into a G20 for developing nations. Firstly, let me tell you, Mr. Mohammed Asaki, China is firing a gun off our shoulders. It's no longer a developing country. It's a middle-income company which has stolen all the technology from everywhere in the world and the only finance it has to offer is debt diplomacy. The emergence of an alliance of nations in the global south that breaks the West's hegemony could be a game changer in Japan. Now, this is the BS that you continue to hear. Hegemony, hegemony. You think China has lesser of a hegemony in Southeast Asia or anywhere else in the world, Mr. Saki? Right? The Ukraine crisis should be an occasion for the leaders of BRICS nations to commit themselves to the original goal of the bloc. It's an opportunity they should let go of or get real, Mr. Saki. Mr. Saki. Common interest with India for far outweighed differences is China. Tell this snake oil chair, uh, sales of Mr. Wang Yi to get the hell off his high house and get out of India. Once he gets out of India, maybe we'll discuss the rest. India, China to tap multilateral forums for, forms, forums for bilateral contact. Guess who's making all these statements? Not India. It is this Wang Yi, right? BRICS leaders emphasize respect for sovereignty. Okay, that's good. China talks of shared interests with India. Him, of sovereignty. Our sovereignty has been destroyed. Ukraine's sovereignty has been destroyed. Who's going to look after them, Mr. Xi, uh, Mr. Yi, Wang Yi? Structural changes in BRICS have increased its influence. And this is Modi Ji. Now, what structural changes have happened in BRICS, I have no idea. And what has increased its influence? This is like mouthing something that you don't understand. BRICS to play key role post-COVID global economic recovery says, yeah, I wonder if this white beard is getting these statements. But I guess he's going to make them because he's so afraid of she. He's so afraid of she. And I can tell you he's afraid of she because he just does not come down and nail them whenever. Bolster cooperation against terrorism says, go. How can you, this is now another bunch of idiots. Now, China is never really going to stand by our side as far as terrorists are, Pakistani terrorists are concerned. BRICS declaration decries politicization of listing proposal against terrorists. Now what this is, both sides are politicizing. India and China. Okay. Maki designated under UAPA part of attacks in India since 2006 as MHA. China blocks U India US proposal to name Maki global. So tell me who's playing games. So you have the global saying we should look at it in the same way. You have Xi saying. So for Xi, the Uyghur is a terrorist for India, the Kashmiri, the, the Pakistani is a terrorist. Now, where is he going to go? And then what do we have? Manjuri say, she says, recipient countries hold the key to China's BRI success. The important lesson from this case is that BRI is working, success and failure should not simply be assessed by looking at China's growth and interest. But unfortunately, Manjuri, you have to. You've got no choice, but that's the way China is looking at it. Because you know what's happened to Sri Lanka, have not you, Manjuri? Okay, recipient country, because of geopolitical concerns and domestic interests it can, can intersect to affect how well or poorly BRI functions in their country. There is a caveat to this, Ms. Manjuri, is this, that, you know, when you are, China is going after all the corruptible nations, in which case you are just not concerned about the people, neither are the leaders, as you've seen in, absolutely seen that in, 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 uh, in, in Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh has survived this, is because of balancing done by India. India, Bangladesh explore cooperation in AI, cyber security startups and Bangladesh, let me tell you, and Nepal have continued to survive only because of India's largest, if nothing else, folks. Three cheers. So you see the balancing game that India is about. Just when Modi ji is with, uh, with the Prime Ministers, with Xi and the, the, the Russians, what do we have here? The, the Raksha Mantri is with Chinese assault on Indian forces warning for all says Australia. And this is when the Deputy PM is making Rajnath Singh and shaking hands. China, biggest security worry for India, Australia says Marlis. This is in India, he says this. Australian Deputy PM, concern over growing China-Russia military partnership. I have to part participate in X pitch black in August. Okay. What's China's game with Britain, right? This is the important part. As Gurjeet Singh writes, 
China wants a larger BRICS to challenge the existing international order, but can it? China, backed by Russia, is hastening the process of expansion of BRICS as part of its strategic challenge to the international order and to collect middle powers around them. China cannot get India out of BRICS or the G20 as it has been trying to keep India out of other international fora. And this is what we should remember, right? India needs to ensure that expansion is not on Chinese terms and that the countries admitted are equally receptive to India. Bilateral engagement with them should see this perception built up, right? Since Russia is simply with Chinese priorities, it is time for the IBSA trilateral of democracies within BRICS to assert itself. Consultations on criteria and members must be strong. IBSA may act as a phalanx within BRICS to prevent China from run, running away with the expansion agenda over the views of the members. This is important, okay? And that's why it's important. And that's why I guess the West is also letting us be, right? Within BRICS, right? This is what somebody says here. Morning brief by... Home Quinn, the BRICS summit begins. He writes, addressing the same forum, Putin was bullish on the economic opportunities presented by the group, touting negotiations on opening Indian chain stores in Russia, increasing Chinese industrial imports, and reorienting trade flows to BRIC BRICS nation. How can you reorient trade flows, right? All technology, Putin is, you know, brain dead anyway, I think. According to Putin, trade with group increased by 38% in the first quarter of 2022 to all oil, right? He added that BRICS could soon go up a step further by challenging the US dollar, creating its own international reserve currency based on the basket of currencies of our country. Just remember, folks, India is critical for this and India should not allow it because one side is the United States dollar, which is free. It's, it's freer than anything else that you know. On the other sides are the rubles and the and, 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 and the Chinese currency, which can be shut down at any point of time. Right? But as a great power competition continues to heat up, not just between US and China, but now US and Russia, it's going to be increasingly difficult and delicate to maintain the balance. Indian officials are naive about their position and are reportedly working to block any attempts to insert anti-US messaging into the BRICS joint statement, as well as slow any attempts to expand the grouping. That the BRICS grouping is not known as a particularly effective combination may work in India's favor. I think that India can make a gamble, which I think is pretty safe, and it can essentially pledge full support for everything BRICS is doing to show that it's a loyal member of the group, while at the same time betting on the strong likelihood that BRICS won't be able to move the needle forward on a lot of the issues and plans that are discussed. Absolutely right. India is in high demand in a busy week for Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He travels to Germany over the weekend to attend the G7 summit, and in July he joins another new grouping in acronym I2U2 with the leaders of Israel and the United Arab Emirates and the United States. There is the contradiction, right? Then we have a South Asia brief by Michael Kugelman. He writes, but his members have struggled to implement their vision for trade and economic structures outside the US dominated financial system in part because of their own economic challenges, especially China folks. The, the currency is dead and gone. For India, which seeks a permanent seat at the global high table, BRICS will provide benefits. However, the presence of India's rival China and the greater role it seeks to assert within the group poses challenges. BRICS can still work for New Delhi, but it must perform a careful balancing act. BRICS brings several advantages to India. Participation in a non-Western grouping balances India's growing partnership with the West, a key aspect of its strategic uh, uh, autonomy policy. BRICS, however, lacks the momentum and common purpose of the quadrilateral security dialogue made up of Australia, India, Japan and the United States and also the, the economic heft. Still, BRIC presents a few problems of India because China, which currently holds the group's retaining presidency, appears determined to scale up its clout, and that's where India needs to shut it down. And look at this, outgoing Israel government ally, uh, allies vow to block Netanyahu's return, conflict and confusion in Israel, need more talks to assuage Gulf says Doval, very important, and Biden set to meet Saudi's MPS in West Asia trip. Welcome to the party, welcome to the shifting sands of, of, of Saudi Arabia. You can't do without them, don't do without the Middle East at all. So the churn has begun because the US has pulled out, but you really, you know, you got Turkey going in and uh, shaking hands with MBS, MBS traveling all over the place. The problem is basically for these guys, Qatar and Kuwait. Three cheers. So India needs to realize which side is going to give it its most benefit? Definitely, in my opinion, not the Russian and this, this crazy north-south developing countries because both these guys, whether it is Russia, not considered a developing nation, or China, not considered a developing nation. They're just firing off our shoulders for their own benefit. So, Modi to attend G7 summit in Germany, visit UAE next. Here's another place where the US is not getting entwined. Having helped uh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan to get, get a bailout now, uh, have helped have, uh, Maldives and now Nepal. Nepal and US dismiss reports of military deal, but I'm told there is. Condemn profit remarks, but welcome BJP actions in the United States. Um, so this is the important part. The US is giving us a whole bunch of leverage, even though the, the, these two ladies, have these liberal ladies have brought up a, 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 a act against us at, in, in, in the Congress, right? Ukraine, Moldova, a step closer to EU membership. Russia cuts natural gas exports to European nations. Germany, Italy call it political move. And Russia's Davos Putin slams US says EU's political sovereignty is lost, right? But what about territorial sovereignty, Mr. Putin, of, of Ukraine? Ukraine and Moldova granted coveted EU candidate status. Ukraine troops may pull back from uh, Lysenshank, who likely to irritate Russia as a provocation. 
Europe may shift back to coal as Russia turns down gas flows and it may also turn, have been forced to turn to, to nuclear, which it was stupidly gave up, right? Germany, Italy, Austria, Netherlands signal shift. Russia surpasses Saudi to become China's biggest crude supplier. Russia blockade of Ukraine grain, a war crime says EU diplomat. And India is interested in the European Union. So we got to get our act together, right? India, EU resumed discussions on FTA after hiatus of nine years. But this is what you need to hear of what, what the European Union is doing. The European Union is turning on China. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has driven a wedge between European Union and China. And for the first time in the history of the relationship, Brussels is ready to go on the offensive. Written by Elytra a decino in the foreign policy. The EU's long-standing assumption that economics can be a substitute for actual foreign policy in dealing with authoritarian states now looks like a bad bet. It may be the EU, it, it may at the EU-Japan summit, Brussels and Tokyo pledged to deepen our exchange on China, notably with regard to security dynamics. The same month, Brussels announced that it would conduct a, an upgraded trade dialogue with Taiwan in June, one ostensibly aimed at deepening EU Taiwan cooperation in semiconductor manufacturing. In reality, it was a signal that EU is willing to reopen discussions on boosting links with Taiwan, irrespective of China's reaction. This proposal was previously floated in late 2021, but scrap, scrapped for fear of backlash from Beijing. And a little country like Lithuania showed them off, right? And the scramble for semiconductor is our era's industrial great game, folks. And this is true for Europe, true for the United States, true for India. Foxconn, Foxconn mulls India's EV drive. PM Modi welcomes Foxconn's plans for expanding in India. But do remember this when you see this. This is all about upgrading our trade ties with Taiwan. So we have to go after TSMC. And now what happens here? Rajnath likely to visit UK in July, defense cooperation in focus. And this was the important part as far as Australia is concerned. Our entwined values and interests. Australia has a vision for an open, inclusive and resilient Indo-Pacific region. It is a vision shared by partners like India. Australia's interests don't just align with India's. They are in inextricably entwined. Expect the relationship to grow and prosper, our cooperation to deepen. The, this this might be my first visit as Deputy Prime Minister, but it won't be last. The other place we were going about expanding and giving our F2 to the Indo-Pacific is here. India to host key meetings of ASEAN foreign ministers today, which it held. India ASEAN conclave. Foreign ministers agree on unifying response to global issues. India and ASEAN look to partner on Indo-Pacific amid China's inroads. And uh, India, China, but this is a funny, this is a disconcert, this Note. India, China buy discounted Russian oil making up for Europe's cutback. This is what we have to worry about. China launches its third and most advanced aircraft carrier. And this is an important leg up. India emerges front runner for Malaysian fighter jet order. What we all offered is deal would include maintenance and spares for nation's Russian origin Su-30 fighter jets. China is out. South Korea is out. We are in play, folks. Three cheers and Jaehan. So the shifting sand of the Middle East, very interesting, right? Amid Ukraine war, Egypt to import Indian wheat, a wheat got rejected in Turkey for some reason, that probably was political. But Egypt and Indonesia, from a critical if we import both Muslim countries, we are having problems with, with our internal dynamics. And there's plenty of, let me just tell you folks, there's plenty of wheat, plenty of sugar in the country. It's never going to be a shortage, rising prices are because of just global expectations. And this is our internal problem that we resolve, that uh, reflected in uh, uh, international politics, mob disrupts international yoga day event in morning. However, Iran in play. The shadow of sanctions. Iran foreign minister visit reaffirms the resolve of two countries to strengthen ties as India strengthens new partnership within its regional vision central on the Indo-Pacific and Iran deepens relations with China and Russia. Both countries remain driven, remain driven by the goals of advancing their standing at the regional and global level. Both are keen to project themselves as independent strategic actors determined to play a role in shaping a new multipolar order in the shared Eurasian neighborhood and also at the global level. Okay, but. Implications for us in the Islamic world, Islamic State claims attack on Gurdwara in Kabul, India gives special visas, India sends team to Afghanistan, restores its diplomatic presence, Lanka in trouble, Lanka's economy has collapsed, can't buy oil, says PM, Sri Lanka begins two weeks shutdown, Sri Lanka's parliament session curtailed as fuel shortage, pinches, US and Australia announced 55 million additional support, where's China, really, right? India will extend full support to Sri Lanka, says Foreign Secretary Kawatra, where's China, right? Lanka left with fuel stocks of five days, says Minister. On the other hand, Bilwal visits. Bil is Park secures IMF deal to restore six billion aid importantly. Bilwal pitches for engagement with India says it serves Pakistan interest. Some change in foresight. FATF decision on removing Pakistan from grey list by October. But till Pakistan acknowledges this and they don't, the reckless borrow, Pakistan's economic crisis is in part due to high interest rates on Chinese loans. If China refuses to help solve a problem it has helped create, other lenders may also refuse to contribute. Why write off money that will then be used to pay off a single lender at everyone else's expense? However, if China does write off some of its loans, it will face similar demands from other borrowers that signed up for the PRI, which it actually should. It's been charging money lender rates, folks. Money lender rates. 
Jai Hind. It's just a bad player, diplomatic player. No matter what, everybody glosses over China and developing nation and developing nation. It's all out to take your money and run, folks. Three cheers.